Well, good morning. It's uh, now just shortly after 6 a.m. on Sunday, the 30th of June. Uh, I'm Andy, and this is my allotment. Got a quick spin round to show you what's been happening since I did the last update, which was on a week last Friday when I just got back from holidays. Uh, did quite a bit of work last Saturday and Sunday. Uh, last Saturday, rather, Sunday rained. Not done a huge amount through the week, but uh, did a bit yesterday and uh, going to have uh, the morning on the plot today going to uh, a jazz and strawberries event this afternoon a fundraiser which is going to be quite good i hope it was last year anyway and, and it rained so this year we've got a nice day in prospect and then coming back again later on tonight uh, i'm hoping to do a couple of updates after each session to show you where i'm up to but uh, we'll see if it happens right starting off as always with the potatoes which as you can see are doing absolutely fantastically Loads of flowers in the middle. Now, these flowers are the same as the ones I've got in the polytunnel. As you can see, they are lovely. Purple with bright orange stamen. So those are going to be Pentland Javelins, first earlies. At the back of them, are some yellow flowers with bright orange. Then go on to the main crop, Anya, which are doing nothing. And then the uh, Maris Piper, which have got lovely purple flowers on. In the buckets, we have got some flowers on the Maris Piper. Uh, not sure what those are because it's not really open yet, but they do look like they could be the Pentland Javelins. Two, two buckets of Pentland Javelins, one either side here, so I think that's what they've got there. Uh, nothing on any of the others, which is fantastic, that's what I want. I just noticed I've got some uh, eaten leaves there on that one, not sure what's eating them. But uh, I'll have a little fertile later and see if I can find out what it is. Anyway, that's the potatoes. Moving on to the fruit bed. Spent a lot of time yesterday weeding this. If you look back at the previous videos, you see it was quite deep in weeds at the front one here. All the bottles have now been moved off the bed and they're ready for under planting. Uh, I'm going to plant some salad crops underneath these and probably some herbs. The plan is the herbs are going to stay, the salad crops are going to be harvested. Uh, and we've got some fruit coming on the raspberries. Not much, but hey, first year, I'm very happy to have some. The bed at the back, I'll show you from this side today. Strawberries and herbs, all looking pretty good. Especially the oregano and especially the sage at this end. It's going absolutely berserk. That, that just needs a trim back. The mint's doing fantastically as well either side as you can see there, in the little pots. So that's going to be really really good. I'm going to probably harvest some sage sage leaves today to trim it back more than anything else. I'll take them home, chop them and freeze them so that they can be used at home when I need to. Um, now the hanging baskets, doing fantastic again. Look at the strawberries on there, lovely. Just going to wait for those to ripen. They're just having a hint of going red now. And then my tumbling tom in the top isn't exactly tumbling as yet but hey, we'll wait and see. Now I've got some tomato plants here which I've brought from uh, the project we're doing at the school where we're running a community garden. We have far too many tomato plants. Um, we've got a lot of the plants donated for use. We can't use them so I brought some down here to uh, get use out of them. The problem is written, the people who gave them to us wrote the labels with washable pen and they've been watered several times. So these are either cherry tomatoes or tumbling tomatoes but either way I'm going to stick uh, one or two in the top of the pots and then there's um, probably one in the top actually looking at it and then around the edges there's six gates if you like and I'll probably use three or four of those the other bed here with the uh, strawberries and herbs the herbs are doing really really well so this is uh, coriander dill and chervil the chervil is doing fantastic I say when this was first put in some of the leaves on it were very very purple uh, when they came out of the module Presumably that's because there was a lack of nutrients within the compost I've been using. As you can see now, they're all brilliantly green. So that's a lesson to me to get things out of the modules faster. And the strawberries on here got loads of loads of big strawberries coming up on the first two. And I still got some on that one as well. Right, rhubarb bed. This has been part weeded. I've done the front side. We've harvested some rhubarb off recently, um, which I've given to Stepdog Ken. Some of this at the back, this is all first year rhubarb. And at the back there, as you can see, lots and lots of mare's tail 
bits of cooch grass. That's going to be finished off today and cleared out. Um, the grass at the back is getting shocking. Uh, and down the side of the potatoes there because all that to the right up to where the flag iris is is mine as well i've got my new pile hiding under there so all that needs to be strimmed today uh, i'm going to borrow the strimmer again and go around and do it along with this side of the plot there as you can see oops flying over the bottles um, as you can see there it's getting quite deep again not as bad as it was before i strimmed it last time but still bad enough so what i'm going to do this time i'm going to strim it and then i'm going to put the landscape fabric over the top of it to hold it down, which I should have done last time, but I was stupid and didn't do it. But anyway, we'll move on a bit. Right, this uh, was the fruit holding bed where I put my fruit bushes to be held until I'm ready to uh, put them in. So I've got beds for it. Got gooseberries. Now these were sold as blackberries, as bare twig blackberries, but they've come up with the black currants. Not complaining. I like black currants, but I do prefer what's a blackberry. A uh, couple of gooseberry bushes doing fantastic, and some more black currants on different twigs. Now, all the rest of this was covered in weeds last time you saw it. Uh, I've gone through it, re weeded it, and I planted some cabbages underneath. The idea being, as and when these bushes come out, I'll fill the rest of it with brassicas as well, and I should end up with a new brassica bed here. But at the moment, I've got nowhere to put these plants, so I'm staying where they are. Right, the square foot gardening bed, quite a lot of change. Last time you saw this, the middle of it was dominated by some perpetual spinach, two great big plants, and some purple sprouting broccoli in the middle, which I'd finished, basically. So they've come out, and as you can see, there's quite a lot gone in. We've got some uh, dwarf French beans here, a cobra, which are doing fine. Lolo Rosso lettuce, and some pak choy, and I've planted uh, a few calabrese in the corner there. Um, I'm going to harvest them when they're fairly small, so I'm not bothered about them getting too big for the area. Then I've got some Chantenay red cord carrots, onions, some uh, Mr. Ferns beans, I think they are, and some beetroot, cylindra. Now that's coming on quite nicely. There's some uh, nice roots coming in here, as you can see that. But there's a few in there which are starting to thorn. I'm doing very nicely. Then we move on to some Paris silver skin onions and some uh, Paris Market carrots with the small ones some uh, Swiss chard and some spinach lettuce over that side some radish uh, those are really really tiny radish I'm not sure why they're really tiny because the others are planted at the same time from a different park admittedly are much much bigger then we've got perpetual spinach we've got some um, a bolt hardy beetroot Three asparagus peas in the middle, onions, ever onwards peas, perpetual spinach, my one and only swede, which is doing okay, but there's only one of them there, I don't know why, only one came up. Some more carrots, uh, I think those are early nants, no they're not, they're autumn king, sorry. Lettuce, pak choy, radish, I've harvested maybe 15 radish out of that patch so far, they were a mixed bag, and just sowed it, cut two or three seeds to a station, they're doing fantastic. Then I've got some um, spring onions and some more beans. So there's plenty in that bed. And I've still got probably six or eight um, squares in there, mostly down this left hand side, which haven't yet been planted into. So loads to go in there. This next bed also had loads and loads of perpetual spinach in it. That's gone, because it ended up being four foot high and really unmanageable. Uh, I planted another one right at the very top, you can see. The, uh, some lettuce there which is doing well, not been slugged or anything at all and walking onion, the Egyptian tree onion and comfrey. Now I've had to tie this comfrey up because it was flopping everywhere. Uh, what I might do this week, although I'm not sure I've got the time, is to harvest the top half um, and then basically just stick it in a bucket, stick some water on top of it, weight it down, cover it and leave it to um, turn into some nice comfrey tea in the next three or four weeks which I can then use to feed everything. The onion bed. Some of the onions started flopping over which means from what I've been told they're ready for lifting. So what I've done with them, as you can see some of them, I've just put the fork underneath them a little bit and lifted them just to break the roots a little bit. Just enough to tell the plant it's being lifted. The idea is then that the plant starts to send all the goodness from the leaves back down into the bulbs. That's the theory, we'll see. Some of the red onions in the middle are still going strong, they're not ready for lifting yet, although they are quite large bulbs. And I've got 
that's only five, six, seven, seven onions, eight onions, uh, which are out at the moment. I'll leave them on top for a couple of days because it's supposed to be nice weather. Let them dry off a bit and then I'll move them into the polytunnel onto one of the shelves and uh, in the in the poly within the poly and um, let them dry until they get the paper husk that we used to and get all the leaves withered. Uh, then I'll get them taken home and we'll have onions. So I'm quite happy with that. First time I've actually got anything else in my onion bed. Okay, leeks and garlic and shallots and onions. Um, doing okay. The two leeks at the front there are last years which are being uh, were overwintered etc. Uh, one of them's had a flower spike on it, one's got a belt of a flower spike, so they're going to come out. I'll probably take them out early next week, take them home, chop them, freeze them. That might be the last one. Garlic. This is the giant garlic I got from Asda. Um, really, really strong growth. The best, in fact, the only garlic I've had to, got to grow this year, with the exception of one or two weedy little individuals in the other beds. Leaves are starting to go brown. Um, don't think it's rust because it doesn't look like rust it looks more like just brown leaves so I think what's happening here is just getting ready for being harvested there's uh, plenty of stuff there uh, leeks on the far side these are the ones were donated to me um, and unfortunately lots of horsetail in here onions are transplanted out of modules are mostly all standing up now so they're doing well and the shallots also doing well with the exception of one on the far side which looks a bit straggly if I lose one out of 15, I'm not too concerned. Uh, I shall dig it up and have a look and see if there's anything underneath it causing the problems. Only main problem here is there's lots of horsetail coming through, but it's a five minute job to get the, the, stuff, the weeds out. There's not that many, uh, so that's going to get done later on today. And my sacrificial um, brassica, still don't know what it is. There's no indications on it, whether it's a cauliflower, whether it's anything else. Uh, a few holes on it but nothing major no ca cabbage whites I've had a go at it although I can see a slug down there on one of the leaves on the bottom a little baby slug and he's coming off shortly but nothing's having a go at it and I still don't know what it is don't expect anything off it it's simply here to attract the cabbage whites and give them somewhere to go rather than the rest of my stuff the brassica bed has gone mad as you can see they're starting to really really push underneath the, the uh, netting here um, the ones at the, the back there of this netting system, I'm not sure what they were. They might have been collies, but there's no sign of a head on them whatsoever. They're definitely not cabbages, but there might have been. There, there were other collies in the area that I've taken this from. So, again, I don't know what they are. I'm leaving them to see if they actually try to form a head. If they form individual florets, like a broccoli, even though it's a collie, I'll have them because we've had that before and it's really nice. I'll just walk around the front of the bed to show you. The front half, which is even worse. Okay. Now, I should have harvested that purple sprouting last month, last week rather, and I didn't. I look at the state of it. It's just lifting the netting up a good four or five inches above the level where it ought to be. Uh, it's absolutely stupid in there. There's sweetheart cabbages at the front. I can see four of those at least. There's purple sprouting in the middle, which has gone berserk. I'm going to have to lift the, lift the uh, cage off trim it all back um, there's some spurs in there that haven't gone to seed yet which I'm going to be able to take home to have for tea um, well we may want tea I'm not sure we will have this jab just a strawberries thing we been told there's cucumber sandwiches strawberries and cream and uh, scones and jam so sounds quite good hang the diet for the day <laughs> but anyway um, I'll harvest some of that purple sprouting that's in there uh, that big plant itself, I'm not sure what to do with. I'm not sure just to trim it right back. I hope I get some more spears on it, which I can have. But this time of year, as soon as they come up, they're probably just going to go straight to seed anyway. So I may just take it out completely. I don't know yet. Okay, the new brassica bed. Red cabbage is doing absolutely wonderful, and the calabrese is doing fine. Uh, one of them went to seed, which I've uh, cut off, and we have harvested two more and I've left the stalks inside there and you can see it from here at the back uh, left the stalk in there so that it will actually grow some um, secondary florets which we can eat pretty much like a purple sprouting if you, if you know what I mean but there's, um, there's three more in there which we haven't harvested for three and a baby one which we'll probably get over the next week or so because otherwise looking at it they're looking like they're starting to go to seed and uh, obviously if I get them before they go to seed we can actually 
blanch them and freeze them. Okay, under here we have Brussels sprouts. It's well, supposed to be Brussels sprouts, but they don't look like a Brussels sprout at the moment, but never mind. They're doing wonderfully. A couple of holes on the leaves under there. I'm going to have to get in there and make sure there's been no caterpillars on them. Uh, on the other side, I'll lift this up out of the way. Some weeds that need to get out of. Uh, some collies in there and some lettuce. And uh, a dandelion right in the middle as well. The lower Ross lettuce is doing really well in there, but uh, I've seen how well they've done on the other bed. And that's brilliant. Right. Uh, beans. Okay. Planted up some French beans. I don't think these were in last time I showed you. I've got... Uh, let's see how many I've got on here. 24 French climbing beans. Blue Lake at the front here. I can see one or two of them have been slug munched and I can see that the slugs have had a go at the pellets. But um, I put plenty in to allow that for a bit of um, attrition. The early onwards peas are trying to climb but they're being pretty inept about it to be fair. I keep winding them round and they keep deciding they don't want to go like that. They're going somewhere else and they're all winding themselves in the night. Uh, courgettes or mammoth pumpkins or whatever they were because we lost the labels coming up fine and same over there. And the sweet corn in the middle is also doing really nice. Now I'm a bit disappointed on this front edge here. I planted um, 18 runner bean, runner bean uh, seeds. And I've got five. You know, there were supposed to be three against each of these poles, and I've ended up with five coming up and germinating. I had a sixth one, but it's died off. I'm not sure if somebody's got it or what. But either way, I'm not particularly brilliant and happy about that. Still got time to plant some more. So I'll plant some into root trainers in the polytunnel and uh, try and get those to grow. As soon as they grow, they're coming out. Whether they're, you know, whether they're big enough or not, they'll, they'll be sorted. On this side of the arch, we've got um, beans climbing up three of the poles. The other two, again, are refusing to climb. They're just flopping around on the ground. Or the two, or the three, rather. Uh, but they're going. Uh, these are going to get a feed today. I'm going to give them a feed of chicken manure pellets on the surface because beans are hungry crops and so I want to make sure they get everything possible. Right, the mystery squash in the middle. Now I think we've solved the mystery of what this mystery squash is. If you watch my videos from a couple of um, weeks back, you'll notice that when I was planting out, I discovered right in the middle of the bed, where I wasn't expecting it, a couple of leaves which looked like a squash and I was a bit confused as to what it was because I hadn't planted anything. We've been talking with the people here on the side trying to figure out what's happened and what we think is that um, well last year this area here was used as my compost pile and I grew a pumpkin just around the corner and uh, when it came time to harvest we found that the uh, the pumpkin inside was just well the, the bottom of the pumpkin had rotten and it got all the way through to the inside so we couldn't use it so I brought the pumpkin up and tried to find some viable seeds but they were all mushy so we just threw the whole lot on a compost pile I've then turned the compost pile over and redistributed it within this bed and what we think has happened is some of the pumpkin seeds have come to the surface and become viable because we've got a few others as you can see there's a couple of small ones there and i've got one here underneath the beans get down to it it's down under there and these are all popping up all over so the only way that this can happen is if the seeds within the soil and i think what's happened here is that we've got a self-sown pumpkin the pumpkin that I broke up and threw in the, in the compost pile, there were some viable seeds and they're all coming up, which is brilliant. Not that I'm complaining. Um, right, there's not a lot to show you elsewhere at the moment. <laughs> Lots of nettles, which I'm, again I'm going to try and harvest and put make nettle tea with. All this round here is going to get strimmed. This is the remains of my, my compost pile. There's probably there are half a ton left on this side. And a big cardboard box which I'm not really using at the moment for anything. But all this grass is going today. I'll show you quickly inside the polytunnel. There's not a lot left inside there now because uh, I've taken most things out. Uh, after the last, not last week, the week before when I went away and things didn't get watered, with the weather forecast being for rain, I stuck everything on the, t on the table over there, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but in here, my potatoes in sacks are doing brilliantly. Pendley javelin at the back, got the same flowers on as before. 
At the back there I've got some tomatoes and one squash. On this side, chilies, tomatoes. I'm not going to show you those in detail because I've seen them all before. Um, my uh, New Max Twilight uh, chilli is now starting to produce little tiny chilies which are standing straight up from the plant rather than hanging down, which is nice. But that's why I got it in the first place. And then got some other tomatoes and chilli plants which are at the moment just outside sitting in a puddle to water them from the bottom because they were dry last night I didn't have time to water all right stuff that's left over here some leeks they're going to go in uh, this weekend or in early next some coriander sage beans cabbages here that are left over got a couple of cucumbers underneath there got one there one there when they get a bit bigger they're being transplanted out uh, some lettuce which are going yellow so they're using up all the nutrients in there they need to come out fairly soon uh, okra just one of them and some lots of lots of herbs some sage some thyme mint um, parsley what else have I got in there uh, lemon balm um, some marjoram all the sorts in there they're all going to come out because looking at the colour of them they've been in there far too long they need to come out they need to go into bigger pots or into the ground I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them I'm probably going to pot up the parsley and the thyme and I may put the rest of it into the ground uh, straight away the way I've done with the rest of the uh, stuff. Quick update on the pond. Still no major movement on it. I'm basically letting it get stable. The water is very, very murky at the moment. Um, it's a lack of, of nutrients, etc., within the, uh, uh, the, the the mix to, to clear it. Uh, I've been told I need to put some uh, some uh, clearing chemical in. Uh, one of the other plot holders, John, has got a big pond at home. He keeps fish. He's going to bring me down some chemicals um, to put in it. Uh, it's, a, it's just a chemical to clear it. It wastes perfectly harmless to all the the, uh, the pond life. Which is good because uh, last night I was sat here late on, about half past nine after I'd finished, and watching all the newts. I mean, just looking at them now, maybe you can see it on here, but uh, I've just seen half a dozen of them come to the surface to take flies, etc. Or maybe for air, I'm not sure what they're doing. But uh, there's a lot in there. There's a heck of a lot in there. But uh, I just have got to get the time and the money to uh, to border this with wood and make it look pretty. And then we can actually uh, move on and uh, start doing stuff around the edges of the pond. But at the moment it's just on hold till I get the money to do it. Uh, right, anyway. Leave it at that because I've been talking for about 22 minutes which is uh, long enough. And what I might do is do a couple of uh, little updates as and when I do things on the plot today to show you how I'm getting on. I'm going to string up the second bed that's got the comfrey in it to make that square foot gardening bed. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of weeding and um, basically just general tidy up. And then the main job of the day is strimming. Um, I'll just quickly show you that uh, as I step over here, um, this, would you believe it, this is the path. And down there, down towards the other polytunnel, there's a path that goes down to, this right, to the left of my compost bin. You can see to the left the huge amounts of uh, greenery and uh, the big clump of weeds and etc. So my path goes right down the middle. You can't see it because it, it's not grass, or not mostly grass anyway, it's horsetail. It's just so much horsetail that it's just gone green. All I'm going to do is just go along here and stream the damn thing. I can't see that I can do anything else. And uh, when I've done that, I can't even put poly on the top of it because it's not mine to put it on. Uh, I'm going to cut back into this little bit here as well. But the problem, this is all a horsetail. That is just one big horsetail. So there's so much of it. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I shall uh, leave you to it. And I will probably come back later on with a couple of more short updates. And I do mean short. Bye bye for now.